I know I'm home because when I film, there is someone watching me while yawning. Okay, you have a nap. You're working so hard over there. <laughs> I'm back in my space. It's really, really nice to be home with all my things and supplies and my puppy dog who is currently under the camera tripod having a sleep. So that's cute. It's been so nice to be home with him again. I missed him so much. He's so cute. He's just like right there and I want to scrunch him face. Now that I am back and I've done my five months in England, I thought I'd give you all a quick overview of the experience, uh, college, would I recommend it? Would I do it again? What I made? Because that's the most important thing really, is what did I make? And I made some fun stuff, which I will show you in just a second. I don't know if I ever actually said on YouTube where I was studying. I did on my Instagram, which if you're not following my Instagram, it is Brunwyn Emma underscore creates. Yeah. Um, and that's where I posted more stuff in the last five months. Not a lot, but I did post more than I did on YouTube. I was very bad. I'm sorry. I thought I'd have way more time to do outside things like outside of college, but I did not. <laughs> It was like college or nothing. So where was I spending all my time the last five months? I was studying at the Northern College of Costume in York, which is two hours train ride outside of London. Beautiful town to live in. Like York itself is gorgeous. It's like, it's old, but it's still new. But the center is old because it's like an old Roman town. Like there's a wall outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm explaining this real well. Can you tell I study the costumes and not the like history? <laughs> While I was away for the five months, the course that I did was actually only four months long. I spent the first four months, well 15 weeks, it's just shy of four months, at the Northern College of Costume having a ball. That place is amazing, highly recommend. Um, and then I had two weeks off in which time I went to Sweden actually to visit my friend who lives there, is Swedish, and it was her birthday so we got all dressed up and had a costume party which was great because I had all these costumes. And then I came back and I did two weeks of work experience with Pauline, the amazing lady who runs the Northern College of Costume because she had a freelance job and needed a hand so several of our students came back to get some experience working on a job. So that was my last two weeks in England was spent working which was amazing and actually really good experience to have at the end of the course to then apply that knowledge that I'd learnt straight away kind of thing and then go oh, okay I do have some skills I could be useful in a real job not just I've studied this and I made something pretty now what <laughs> the focus of the course is not on historical accuracy which I appreciate. It's on historical looking, but then it's costume, like it's teaching you how to work in wardrobe, creating a garment that will look the same in a show, like if it was a theater, every night this garment will look the same, it'll be fastened the same way, the train will drape the same way, like it will always look the same, unless you need it to look different. So rather than fastening fronts because the 18th century garments would often just pin things together like with actual pins not safety pins sharp stabby pins rather than do that we would we put proper closures in ours so like a hook and eye so that no one was in danger of getting stabbed by a pin if they were on stage running around screaming yelling singing a song also things like the skirts in my 18th century dress, normally that would be, you know, a front piece and a back piece and the back, the front would tie and then the back would tie. But with ours, they all have hook and bar clasps to close it and hold it there and it's not going to come undone in the middle of a scene or on stage um, and just avoid the little wardrobe issues. <laughs> so it was really cool to see it from that point of view of using historical methods, but also modern and smushing it together and making things happen faster, more securely and longer lastingly. So would I recommend this course? Yes. Like 
to anyone. <laughs> Although I will say, you need skills to go into this course. Like you can't come in as a complete beginner. You have to have done some sort of sewing, have a basic understanding of how to put garments together and then you're good. Like you don't have to be a pro sewer. Like I would consider myself an advanced beginner before I did the course. Like I know how things go together, but not necessarily all garments. I don't know how to make a jacket. I don't know how to make, I don't know, fancy dresses. You know, there's, so I have a great basic knowledge of how to sew, how to work a sewing machine and historical techniques. I'm pretty good with my historical technique knowledge because I've done a lot of YouTube watching, <laughs> personal research um, and playing around here. That I would say definitely helped me. You do not have to be a pro, but basics down. That would, that would That's helpful. As to the workload of the course, as you know, I had no time for anything else. I had planned all these other projects and I wanted to do all these trips and most of that did not happen. I did do weekend trips away, but it wasn't like, by the time I got to the weekend, I was so tired that I didn't want to do much. <laughs> I will say, despite the workload in the first couple of months, I managed to get out a fair bit. And that is mostly because I really did not like where I was living, which is on me. I chose it and I tried to be cheap about it but it was not an ideal situation. And depending on the person you are, you might have thrived in this, but I had a single room in an Airbnb um, and it was a homestay situation. So the person who rented it out also lived there and there was three, no, two other bedrooms. So there was three of us all together, plus her who ran the place. Um, and it's a, a small English townhouse, like it had several layers. I was at the top floor. So it was good in that my room was at the top and no one else was. I was in the little loft room, which was freezing when I got there because England in winter. And then there was only one bathroom to the whole place and the toilet was inside the bathroom, like there was no separation. So if someone was having a shower, you could not go to the bathroom. And if it was a full house, it wasn't ideal. And then, the kitchen was, you know, a bit of a free for all because there was a few people living there and it was generally not the cleanest. So as a anxious introvert who needs her like personal space at the end of the day, I did not deal well with that place. You know, that whole shared living situation, which I will say I have shared houses before. So I thought I would be okay at this, but Apparently not. I managed the first three months in this place and I was supposed to stay another month. So like the four months of the course, I had booked this accommodation and then I had, didn't know what I was gonna be doing with my last month in England. So I hadn't booked anything. And then I knew I was gonna be staying for that month in York by this point, because I had been offered the work experience that I did. I decided to bite the bullet and move accommodation then. I was still in an Airbnb, um, but I moved to a private home. It was a one bed townhouse, so it was roomy and spacious. And I had, yeah, I had a separate bedroom. I had a lounge room, I had a dining room, I had a little outdoor area and a kitchen, and it was all mine. And I didn't have to share or wait for the toilet. Um, <laughs> my mental health went way up at this time, which was why I sort of did it because it was super expensive to do it that way. Like, York is an, is an expensive town. Keep that in mind if you're thinking about doing this co course. York is expensive because it is a student town as well as a, as well as a tourist town. So accommodation is not cheap. So this like one bed townhouse was amazing, but way more expensive than my private room but for my own mental health and getting through the rest of my time there, I, I had to do it. So I did and it was incredible. So no regrets, even though my bank balance is like, ooh. <laughs> York is a stunning place to live. Um, I'm really happy that I lived there for five months. Like it was gorgeous. It's this nice little old town and then it's got these walls around it that you can walk on. 
And of course the York Minster, which is stunning, like outside, it's just a beautiful building. And you just look at it, you're like, oh, why don't we make buildings like this anymore? Um, and I walked past it when it was snowing one time because it snowed while I was there. I was so excited. Everyone else was like, ugh, snow. And me, the Aussie, was like, yes, yeah, snow. This is the best day ever. And yeah, I walked past the York Minster while it was snowing and it was glorious. But anyway, I will stop rambling on about York and everything else. If there's anything else you want to know about it and my experiences or a better cost breakdown because I did I did note down everything while I was over there. Um, let me know in the comments below and I may make a further video explaining just that part of it if you are interested in that or want that. But otherwise, let's move on to the projects I completed. We made three projects as part of the course. Um, two of them were 18th century, one men, one women's. And the last one was 1960s evening wear. The first one we tackled was 18th century women's wear. So the very first thing that we made <laughs> was the very exciting chemise. And this is machine finished. It's never going to be seen. So it just had to be that underlayer and it is machine finished. Then the next thing we did which was really fun to run around in, in the classroom. Pocket hoops. So because we, we didn't do massive panniers, we did little pocket hoops and they fold down very nicely so I could bring them home because I was worried about that. So they just sort of accordion out and these hold out the sides of the skirt, like that goes around the waist and holds out the skirt. And then came like the fun part. We made a pair of stays. My lighting is probably good. Yeah, it's white, so the lighting is going to hate this. But <laughs> this was very exciting. Like, I love making corsets and I've always wanted to make a pair of stays. But it's that sort of thing where I didn't really know how to do it. And I'm not going to lie, when she told us, like when we patterned this, because this is patterned exactly to my measurements, I made the pattern from a, like, a book like that gave me step by step, this measurement to this measurement is this much. But yeah, not gonna lie, when she first said, all right, here's the book that you're making it from, go. And I was like, what? I don't know how to go, what am I going? Why? <laughs> so that was a little bit terrifying. Like, I think this was in week two, we started patterning. And I have never done like drafting from a book. So, and also dyslexic, can't read very well. Well, can read very well, but instructions when especially when there's numbers hurts <laughs> i struggle doing that was while i was jet lagged mind you this was week two i found that a bit terrifying this is why i was saying having some knowledge of basic sewing and pattern making is very helpful obviously if i had gotten really really stuck she would have been there to help me but I got these out of it and I am incredibly happy with these stays. They are very comfortable. I like wore these for several hours. We did a photo shoot day and I wore these for several hours and I was fine. I was completely comfortable because I think these are patterned exactly to me. So they've got the right length of body as well as width. Cause the, I think the length is where a lot of things you need it to sit just right. Cause otherwise it's just, Continuing our undergarments, we then made, ooh, there's a coat hanger. Ooh, get off. <laughs> we then made the petticoat. So this is, again, a very pale color and my lighting is not gonna like it, but it's a big long petticoat. There's ruffles at the bottom, cause why not, yay. After the petticoat come the underskirt, <laughs> which is pretty much the same. It just has no ruffle on the bottom and is in a more interesting fabric. This is not showing up super well, but it's a stripe. And it is pleated over the pocket hoops at the side, and then to the back where it also fastens. So nothing comes apart when someone's wearing it because that would be awkward if your skirt ties came undone and your entire skirt just <laughs> fell off. So we like things secure. <laughs> and then, over the 
underskirt comes the overskirt. <laughs> which instead of fastening at the back, fastens at the front. And ooh, this is a lovely green color. It is open all the way down the front and has lining and also a hook and bar to close it up around the waist. After that, and attached to it now, came the bodice. So it's a bit difficult to show here, but I will put it on and show some pictures and you can get an idea of what everything looks like. time to move along to the men's, which I have hanging up here. I had a lot of fun with my menswear. Technically, it is women's wear because I made it to fit me. Because, well, one, I didn't have a man in the country to borrow for a model. Pauline did offer me one, but, <laughs> sounds so funny. Um, I decided I'd rather make it for me and then I can wear it and be the dashing gentleman um, rather than make it for a stranger who I was never going to see again and therefore the suit would not fit anyone that I know. The first thing we tackled were the breeches. These are full front breeches, so the front falls down. Let me undo that. I'll undo one side. So the front falls away and there are more buttons. <laughs> And yeah, lots of buttons in this. So these are knee length and they've got more buttons and a buckle at the bottom. And basically those are just for show because I can get into them without undoing any of that. <laughs> Next comes the waistcoat, which I keep calling a vest and confusing all the English people because to them a vest is like a singlet. <laughs> and this is a little bit fancier than that. It is a waistcoat. This has pattern matching, if you can't tell. I was not excited. Although I was very excited at the fabric. Like, I really love this sort of purple and blue check plaid. I just thought it was beautiful, even though I did have to pattern match it. And it has pockets, which are functional. There's a real pocket there. <laughs> and the pockets are also po 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 pockets are also pattern matched. If they, I don't know, there we go, kind of. <laughs> Lastly, we come to the jacket, which is the really heavy part of it. <laughs> so this, again, I will put these on and show you, or show you some pictures because this is a bit small and close to show you any sort of detail, but this is my jacket and it also has pockets that are functional and really deep so you could fit all sorts of things in there has <laughs> pleats and fancy swashbuckling movement um, and lots of buttons <laughs> many many buttons when you're wearing this whole outfit you do feel very swashbuckling oh and also there's a shirt of course you're not not going naked underneath all those layers <laughs> so it's again white it's just your basic kind of pirate shirt really <laughs> I was very excited to make this because then I knew how to make it um, we actually made these last because it was one of those things where it was like if it doesn't get done in the time frame I think we had three weeks to make this three or four and it was like if it doesn't get done it's not the biggest deal and we could fit it in around other stuff later or our teacher would make them for us because they're pretty basic but I really wanted to make it myself and I was determined to because I wanted to know how to make this and also I just wanted to wear it around. So I did, I found the time and I have a men's shirt. Oh, and there is a stock. Can't forget the stock. So, <laughs> also, yay. <laughs> that goes ugh, with my men's wear as well. Yeah, that's men's wear, kind of less involved than the women's wear, but again, there's less layers, I guess. There's no corset, there's no pocket hoops, but there are flaps and pockets. So, yay for pockets. I'm ready to a swash buckle.
Then for my last project, we moved out of the 18th century and into the 21st, 20th? I should know this. 20th. Into the... <laughs> Moving into the 20th century for our last project, we were doing 1960s. Um, 1960s evening wear. Um, and it was kind of like find an inspiration picture and, and that will be your garment. So these, the first two, the men and women's 18th century, our designs were chosen for us by our teacher. She chose our fabrics and she said, off you go. Whereas this time it was, okay, do some research, find a image of a garment from the 60s or a few that you want to pull bits from and create a garment. Then we spent a day at the fabric shop shops going around, which was amazing. Who doesn't love a day in the fabric shops? So this is a little wild, this dress. Um, the top has tinsel and pearls and all sorts of weird things going on and a high collar because yeah. And then the bottom part of it is all this sort of silky drape goes on for miles business. <laughs> This was a lot of fun. It very much was outside of my comfort zone. I am very much more familiar with like, I don't know, 50s structure of bodice skirt. This was a little bit of bodice with dazzle and like draping. And then I wanted, I didn't want anything down the back. So I had to figure out a closure that didn't sort of destroy this fun back and the deep V that it goes into. And again, I will put it on and show you. I managed to get this done in time that I also made a cape. <laughs> because, you know, you can't have evening wear without the coat. So that's downstairs though, because that thing's massive and heavy and it's made of velvet. So I'll go get it when I put this on. <laughs> I didn't want to lug it upstairs. anyone is interested in studying historical costuming, I highly, highly, highly recommend going and studying at the Northern College of Costume. It's brilliant. 